All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome as well as we dive into ideas, concepts, principles, and even projects around preparedness and self-reliance. In this particular video, we're gonna discuss ideas around water purification and filtration, specifically three key ways for creating consumable drinking water. So let's jump in. All right, guys, so in this video, as I said, we'll talk about three main methods for creating consumable drinking water. And those could be physical methods, chemical methods, or biological methods. Now, as we dive into these, why is this so important? As we all know, when it comes to an emergency or disaster scenario, having consumable clean drinking water is key. We can only last three days without drinking water. Think about that this is not necessarily one is the best way, or we may use multiple methods for creating consumable drinking water. And we'll talk through some of that. All right, so as we jump into the first method, which is our physical method, there's a couple things that we can kind of think about. Some options might be just sedimentation, where you collect the water, allow the sediment of those other minerals and materials to settle to the bottom or the top, and then be able to consume the water that is, we'll say, clean. Now, in that case, again, depending on where the source of water is, you may still need to either chemically or physically treat it in other methods to be able to make it consumable. But sedimentation is one option to be able to start to filter out some of those materials. A second option is distillation. Now distillation consumes a lot of energy, a lot of things that you gotta do to be able to create that. So it's probably not one of our best options. Now the last option we'll kind of discuss today is filtration. And that's really probably one of the most used today is options for filters. And what filtration is doing is basically trying to separate solids and fluids by passing that through a porous material. And it stops the solids and allows the fluids to be able to go through, creating a consumable source of water. Now, in this case, there's lots of different options out on the market. There's several different filter types. Um, I've used several different ones over the years. Um, one that I've got is this one. This is the MRS. Um, and I've had this one for years using it backpacking and so forth. And this actually has a ceramic filter that, again, passes that water through that ceramic filter and captures all the bad materials and allows the water to go through so that it's consumable. And I've used this, again, backpacking, camping over the last several years, and it's been a great way to be able to do that. As with any of these, as I'll show, I'll create links below as well for a lot of these resources. Now, one of the big ones today that I prefer is probably one of the, the top ones is the Sawyer filters. And the reason why I like Sawyer's is there's several different options out there that you can use. You can purchase these on Amazon. And again, I'll create links below. But Sawyer creates options for just mini filters. You can take backpacking. You've got the one here, which is kind of a squeeze filter allows you to put it on a squeeze bag and to be able to filter a little quicker. And then you've even got sources for more of in-home where you can put it on your faucet or a hose bib and things like that. So when it comes to these type of filters, I have several different options or different capabilities within my kits based on if I'm gonna take it in my bug out bag or my 72 hour kit or if I've got other options or backup for my home situation. So thinking about options or opportunities for filters is one thing you want to consider. What are the resources? What are the, where's your environment and what are you using it for? Again, if I'm taking it out, if I'm on a backpacking trip, I may want something that's smaller and more accessible. And, or if I'm at home, I want something that may be able to attach to my tap or to my hose bib, depending on the scenario. So these are all things to consider as you start looking at your scenario and what situations you wanna prepare yourself and your family for. Okay, so one of the things that we consider when it comes to filter is also, do we have filters in our home, right? Do we have filters already built into some of our water systems? And we actually have a reverse osmosis filter 
So we've got that built into the water line within our fridge. And this creates a good source of clean drinking water. Because as we think about from a filter perspective, if you don't have a filter, then pretty much you become the filter. So depending on that particular water source, um, ideally we know that those water sources should be good. But as we've seen again in recent environment situations from the train derailments, from different challenges with some of the water sources, that we can't always trust those water sources coming through even our own home. Hopefully we've got some of those options in our home built into our, our water lines as well, when it comes to drinking water especially. Now I also do have a Berkey filter, and a Berkey filter is a great, um, just a gravity fed filter, and there's several options out on the market based on the size, but we have one again that we keep with kind of our emergency kit stuff, that if we ever need to filter larger amounts of water, that don't allow us to be able to bring it out of the tap or out of those kind of situations that we can use the Berkey filter as an option as well. So filters is probably one of your top options when it comes to creating consumable drinking water. Okay, so the second method we'll talk briefly about is chemical methods, right? And probably primarily the one that most of us think about is chlorine. To be able to use chlorine to kill any of the bacteria or other bad things that are in that consumable drinking water. Now, again, good or bad, this may create more of a chlorine taste in the water, but it is consumable. And so this is helping us to be able to kill any of the bacteria or protozoa, those things that are can be dangerous to us in an emergency situation. And so there's several options out there. Again, you can go buy liquid chlorine off the shelf. Of course, you wanna get the unscented type of chlorine, some basic things there. You can buy even tablets, and these may be chlorine and or iodine tablets. So iodine is another option for a chemical treatment. And so you can buy tablets like these Aquatabs. Um, those can be purchased, again, through Amazon. Um, there's several different opportunities for purchasing tabs or tablets that you can put into your water to be able to kill the bacteria and the other bad things that are there. So those are kind of the chemical methods. And I'll provide some other options and ideas of how you can create that chlorine solution from hypochlorite. Now hypochlorite you can buy, again, you can usually find in kind of your pool area. This is normally what you would find as pool shock. So you can use hypochlorite to actually create a chlorine solution that then would allow you to actually create different amounts of chlorine solution. You could use it for purification of your water. You can use it for cleaning solutions depending on the scenario. And so hypochlorite is a great opportunity to be able to store it a little more easily than storing liquid chlorine. You can actually store it in a powder form and then create chlorine solution from that particular hypochlorite. Now, one of the things that I would be cautious of though, and this is from experience, I, I actually put some hypochlorite in a container inside my bug out kit, my larger kit that I store at home. And over time, based on humidity and heat and different things that challenge that, um, it actually started to gas off chlorine gas and started to deteriorate some of the other gear that I had. So you can see here, this is one of the things you gotta consider, is when you're storing these things, how do I wanna store them safely so that again, they're away from children, things like that. We don't want them to be able to get in and become a dangerous situation for them to be able to consume some of those. And so always take precaution as you think about not only what you want to use, but how you wanna store it to be able to make it safe based on the environment and the situation you're in. So again, I'll create links down below to some of the documentation that I have. Also, I'll create links to, the web, to my website that you can go and download some of the other materials that will allow you to determine how do I create some of the chlorine solution using hypochlorite and or options even for if I had liquid iodine, how could I use liquid iodine for other scenarios as well. Okay, so as we jump into the third method, we talk about biological methods. And really what this is discussing is ideas around biological materials that are around us, be it rocks, sand, um, active charcoal, things like that, that we can use to create our own filters per se, that are biological type of filters. When it comes to those type of things, think about it from a well perspective. If we go in and getting drinking water from our well, then usually what's the source of that filter? it's those biological filters, right? It's going through multiple sand and or other materials to create a filter automatically to consume those 
negative materials that we don't want in that drinking water. So those are options and, and I'm not going to get into it in this particular video, but we may look at the future and building a couple of those options, right? There are some videos out there you can find as well um, on how to create a biological filter where you can stack multiple buckets together and have them going through different materials that will eventually filter out all those contaminants and create drinking water at the end of that. But I'm not going to dive into it in this particular video. Again, we may do that as a future video as a project that we'll look at building to try and create our own biological filter. Now, one of the key things that we understand when it comes to creating consumable drinking water, depending on the source, you may use one, two, or even all three of these methods, depending on where you're at and what you're trying to accomplish. In some cases, we may actually filter it first and then actually treat it with chemicals or other methods. So these methods, again, we may use multiple methods to create consumable drinking water depending on where that source of water is coming from, what the scenario is, and how we need to create and filter that water. All right, guys, thanks again for joining us for this short video as we discussed how to create consumable drinking water using chemical, physical, or biological methods. Now, one last physical method I do want to mention is a tried and true method that's been used around the world and has continued to be used today, and that is boiling the water itself. Boiling the water, of course, will help kill off the contaminants and bacteria, but there still may be things that remain in that water after the fact. So filtering is still an option afterwards, depending on what you have available to you at that point as well. Also, if you're interested in learning how to create bleach solution using the calcium hypochlorite we discussed, you can go to the website at prepityourself.com forward slash downloads and find the downloads page there for creating that bleach solution and then how to use that bleach solution to be able to create consumable drinking water from that solution. If you're interested in learning how to be able to store water in different containers, please see my other video here. If you're interested in learning how to create a rainwater catchment barrel, please see my other video here, and that will provide some opportunities of how to build one of those barrels. Thank you again for supporting the channel. I have created Amazon affiliate links down below for some of the items that we've discussed in the video. So if you're looking to pick up some of those items, I would appreciate it using those links so that it can continue to support the channel as we strive to build and create more content for you and your family around emergency preparedness and self-reliance. Thank you again, guys, for supporting the channel. I appreciate it. We'll look forward to having you join us on future and upcoming videos.